We saw in the previous video that uh, you can pass in arrays as um, um, argument to a function, and so a function take can take a param as parameter um, an array. You might wonder, well, how exactly does that work? Do you put in the entire array? Do you make a copy of this? So, for example, in this case, you have an int function, a function that returns an int called f, and you have another function called g which calls that f function. So all this is all that's happening here. If in case you're wondering was you have a function called g which has no parameters and inside that function you declare a local variable sorry local array variable called x which is an array of 10 ints and then once you've declared that you call f uh, the call the function f with x as a parameter and also pass in the size of x. Remember that um, unlike Java arrays, there's nothing in this array x to indicate how big that array is. You have to sort of get additional information. For in this case, you pass in that information to this function f as a second um, second argument. Okay, now let's take a look at the function f. This function f returns an int, it has two parameters, an array, and this is how you set up an, um, an array as a parameter. You just say the type name that you want to use locally in here, so this x, uh, this actual array x will be called a inside this function f, and then you all you have to do is spe specify that you, that a is an array using open close square brackets. Okay, so this says that a is this parameter a is an array of ints. Now, this value has no, um, as far as the language is concerned, it has no relationship with this other parameter. It's just that we are going to use it as the size of the array. So we're going to pass in 10, and the intention is that f should use this n as the size of the array. So now if this program makes a mistake and says that x and passes 11 here even though x is of size 10, f might do the wrong thing. So the programmer of g and the programmer of f have better get the right value for n. Okay, so once inside this, let's assume that n is actually the size of a and everything is perfect then all of this will work. And of course, I use the int i inside a loop, which will only work if you're using the C99 standard. So compile with uh, GCC minus STD equals C99 to get this to work. Otherwise, declare the i outside the loop, just before the loop. Okay, if you were to do that, then everything works. It sets the, all of the elements of this array to zero. Now, at this point, you might say, well, what exactly is happening? What are you passing in here? Are you passing 10 things? Are you making a copy of this array x? Putting that, putting that into f? No. What's happening really is that you are passing just one thing, which is a pointer. So even though it says here a is an array and we don't know how big it is, the way this works is in c, arrays are basically just pointers. That is, it is a reference value. That's what we, that's the term we used in Java. So, in Java, when you talk about objects, what you, they are called reference data types. And whenever we have a string, for example, and if you say string x, x is just a reference data a reference variable. So x is a pointer to the location where the string is used, uh, stored. Similarly, in C, when you say a. A is just a pointer. A points to some location, somewhere, where you have stored 10 ints. And when you say A sub 1, A sub 0, A sub 2, A sub 5, and so on, you're taking that pointer and adding the number, whatever you know, index you're using, i, whatever i is, and then accessing that memory location. Okay. So once again, C allows arrays as arguments to functions. An array passed as an argument um, is called, uh, 
So when you pass an array by, as an argument, this is call by value. Um, so this will become important later, especially for those of you who are taking C++. Um, C does not have call by reference, or the C99 standard does not have call by reference. It only has call by value. In Java, everything is call by value. In C++, you have call by value and call by reference. So this is just sort of a note really to the people who are using C++ in addition to C. Okay, so when you pass an array as an argument, you pass, you're doing call by value. The, the address of the first location is passed into the function. So it's not the first location of the array, it's the memory address of the first location of the array that's passed into the function. So just to repeat, the entire array is not passed into the called function. What is passed into a function is a pointer to the first location of the array. So the memory address of the first location is what's passed in. So when you say f of x and x is an array, you're passing in the address of the of x sub 0, this first location of x. So what you have here is the location of essentially x sub 0, but it's being called a, or a sub 0. So a sub 0 will be the same as x sub 0, a sub 1 will be the same as x sub 1, and so on. Okay, so this pointer, the idea of a pointer is um, sort of present in Java. Java makes the use of pointers very safe. It doesn't allow you to do all of the unsafe things that C allows you to do. And so there's a big difference in, uh, although Java doesn't technically have pointers, it, what it has is references, so, but they're you know, practically, or not practically, essentially when you get down to machine language instructions, they're doing the same thing. It's just that Java prevents you from doing anything unsafe with references. Whereas in C, there's a lot of unsafe things that you can do with pointers. And so we've just seen a few of them, that's it. So the next topic, we'll dive more into more details about pointers. So this is a big topic. I'm just trying to get you ready for this. So the basic idea is that if you have an int i variable and you set it equal to 1, this i is somewhere in memory. Let's, pre let's pretend that that location in memory is represented by this the address of that location is represented by these hexadecimal digits, and that's what we will use. That's what most systems use. We can use binary too, or we can use decimal, but most of the time when we talk about addresses, we use hexadecimal. What does hexadecimal mean, you might ask? Well, that means base 16. So you will see in addition to the normal numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's also A, B, C, D, E, and F, because you're in base 16. So this would be, if you if you ever see numbers with uh, any of those uh, six letters, A through, um, A through F, then um, you know that you're in base 16 or hexadecimal. So if you were to look and if you were able to look inside memory and see what happens after you assign one to this, um, to this location, to this variable I, what you would see in this memory location is a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's because an int is 4 bytes. Each of these is 1 byte. So 2 hexadecimal digits is 1 byte. So this is 1 byte. F4 is 1 byte. And you have a 0, 0, that's 1 byte. And 2 more 0, 0s. And then a finally a 0, 1. That gives you a total of 4 bytes. That's how big an int is in most versions of C. And the 1 will be in the least significant spot. So that's why you have zeros at the beginning and then a 1 at the end. And it turns out some CPUs use the opposite notation. So you have the 0, 1 up here and then zeros and then followed by three zeros. Yeah, that can happen too. But uh, in the machines that the CPUs that we are going to use, uh, you can be pretty much guaranteed that this is how they will be stored. So if you have a value 1, you have 3 bytes of 0, and then 1 byte finally with the value 1. Okay, so once again, 
this is how memory is uh, stored and this can be uh, this is essentially the ad this is you can think of that as the address where i is stored so now you can do all kinds of things like get a pointer to point to this memory location things like that so uh, that's what we will go into next